Okay, so what if I told you that the proliferation of Wojak means could teach us a lot about evolutionary biology? No, wait, come back. I'm, I'm serious. Why would I lie to you? I'm British Empire, science and culture correspondent at the Daily Telegraph. My editors are all in the mid 260s. <laughs> None of them have even heard of memes before. I'm an elder millennial. I remember the before time. The time when Bojack was but one of many reaction faces. When he was just the I know that feel guy. One that you'd see from time to time in say rage comics or as a reaction to something. Along with dozens of other faces. Faces that somewhere along the way, like our friend here, went extinct. Rage comics. That's a throwback. Rage comics were a series of user-made four pal comics made using stock memes on stick figure bodies, usually using MS Paint, that popped up on 4chan around 2008. The format usually consisted of a low stakes real life scenario playing out over the first three panels, with the fourth panel usually taken up with the rage face, a badly drawn angry face saying, Wah! Over time, the different faces used in these comics expanded and took in other reaction images from other memes, such as Troll Face. Forever Alone, Mi Gusta, and of course, Wojak. The Fields Guy. Rage comics spread far and wide across the late 2000s to early 2010s internet, proliferating across sites like Reddit and Cheeseburger, where people who didn't want to step into the cesspool that keeps delivering 4chan for their memes. You know, people who like to laugh, but don't think that Nazis were all that appealing really. Kind of the opposite people to my employers at the Daily Telegraph, if you will. Did you know that Lord Nonsbottom has not one but several authentic Third Reich uniforms in his office alone? All I'm saying is, it's lucky people of his persuasion can barely find their spacebar, never mind find their way into his 4chan. Imagine what his bedroom looks like. <laughs> the faces and characters of Rage Comics had some back and forth usage with advice animal style image macros, and through these, the characters proliferated throughout the internet. To the point where my ex-girlfriend's mum once bought me a t-shirt with the Forever Alone guy on it, because she knew it was a meme. Wojak, however, was sort of a man out of time when he appeared in those memes. He wasn't designed for them, and even came out of a different set of memes that proliferated a few years later, with its earliest known use dating to 2009, in the still proliferating meme of Wojak standing in the corner at a party. This, obviously, had its own spread, but its use as a reaction image originated a year after that on Krautschan, which is what it sounds like, as a reaction image posted by a user apparently called Wojak. From there it proliferated through Reddit, Facebook and YouTube, where it became known as the Feels Guy, or the That Feel Guy, or, or that or the That Feel When Guy, or simply Wojak. And then the extinction happened. There have been several huge mass extinctions in the history of life on Earth, from the amazingly metal sounding The Great Dying thought to be caused by a series of massive volcanic eruptions to the most famous mass extinction in the popular imaginary, the KPG or Cretaceous Paleogene extinction event, caused by a literal rock from space crashing face first into Mexico, the effect of which was akin to a nuclear winter, blotting out the sun, which of course is a challenge to anything that relies on, well, the sun, to live, namely basically all life on Earth that's larger than a single cell. When the extinction is over, however, many of the spaces in the ecosystem of the Earth that now lay empty as a as a result of this overhaul, can be filled with new life. And quite often, they get filled quite quickly, geologically speaking. An ecological niche, for those unfamiliar, is a term for the position of a species within an ecosystem, describing both the range of conditions necessary for the persistence of the species and its ecological role in the ecosystem, according to the Encyclopedia of Ecology. Think of this like a class in a role-playing game. A Tyrannosaurus and a lion play like similar classes, exclusively eating meats, probably from a mixture of active kills and scavenging, with no natural predators due to their size. They are at the top of the food chain, so to speak. When the T-Rex had died out at the end of the Cretaceous period, its ecological niche opened up and was fought over by new species of birds and mammals, eventually leading to where we are now, with the big cats, birds of prey and wolves dominating the carnival game. Like all good things, and all biological species, all memes eventually die. In Rage Comics, unlike the most famous of Earth's extinctions, but much more like the destruction of, say, the Western Roman Empire, ended not with a ban, but with a whimper. Slowly, people stopped using the memes. People stopped finding the comics people were making funny, and Rage Comics petered out into the archives. The dead meme, the worst kind of meme. A fossilised relic, if you will, of times gone by. But not every meme used in Rage Comics died. Some lived. Some survived 
And when the smoke cleared, once all the old players were dead, when someone needed a new reaction image, they grabbed the closest thing they had to hand. Not a rage face, but a Wojak. Let's uh, go to Mexico, 66 million years ago. The Earth is a very different place. The continents were in a similar place to where we see them today, but North America, as we know it, hosts the shallow sea in its centre. In the most recent era, a ton of familiar life forms have evolved. The first, flowering pl the first flowering plants, the first grasses, the ancestors of today's bees, wasps, and ants, and yet in the sky, large winged reptiles called pterosaurs still fly. The most predominant species of birds are not the birds we know today. These ones are called enantiornithes, and they still have teeth. Non-avian dinosaurs are not only still around, they are thriving. Ceratopsians and ornithopods are everywhere, the groups that include Triceratops and Parasaurolophus. They develop new and efficient ways of digesting plant matter, and they've around in massive numbers. No longer do we have stegosaurs competing with them, even a lot of sauropod species. Those long-necked giants we know well from our books and movies have died out, but the largest of them are still going strong. Don't worry, little one. Tyrannosaurus rex is alive and well, waving around its tiny, pathetic arms and munching down on the bones of its herbivorous cousins. The ecosystems of the Cretaceous are thriving, but all good things must come to an end. And high above the Mexican skies, a rock from space is on a collision course with Earth. When it hits, every animal I just described will die. And the animals that survive will largely do so on account of being small and having non-specialised diets. They don't need much food to survive, and they're not fussy about what that food is. Think of it as if the world ended tomorrow and all humans were wiped out. Humans ourselves wiped out most of the large animals in the world during our plundering of the Earth in the last million years, so our niche, and the niche of most megafauna we've been keeping down, will be open. People often talk about how cockroaches will survive to the end of the world, and this is largely just a myth about them being resistant to radiation, which they're absolutely not. But I do think they'll probably make it through this hypothetical disaster, as would I think. Rats, mice, crows, pigeons, small gulls, sparrows, the kind of animals that can thrive on our human ravaged cities and towns may well have a good chance of surviving. But that's just my opinion. Don't write that down as the opinion of the entire scientific community. I'm just one columnist for an incredibly dubious newspaper. That being said, I do have a PhD in paleontology, which is more than can be said for science reporters over at the Daily Mail and the Sun. Suck on that, Rupert Murdoch. Lick my ass, Sir Old Mere, or actually, don't. Stay away from my ass. Where was I again? Oh yes. The end of an era. The destruction of the old world. The welcoming in of the new. Several times in Earth's history, the ecosystems of the planet have been faced with a cataclysm. Many of those who had thrived in the previous conditions of the world died, and in their wake, the survivors, the stragglers, repopulated the Earth, and filled the spaces of their ecosystem left by the forebearers. Each role of an ecosystem, what biologists call ecological niches, it's not fixed in space and time for one species or another in specific. Theoretically, any ecological niche can be challenged by an animal more able to exploit it than those currently occupying it, and in the face of mass extinctions, the space is open to enter, occupy, and adapt to these niches without the uphill struggle of competing for these spaces with something already well adapted to it. When a meteor struck the Yucatan in Mexico 66 million years ago, the ecological niches of all dinosaurs except the birds became available to the creatures of the Earth. In the millions of years that followed, both birds and mammals took their turn at trying to fill in these gaps. Giant birds, both carnivorous and herbivorous, gave up flight to tap into newly empty energy reserves on the ground. And mammals? Mammals went from small rodent-like creatures to the diversity of forms we see today. Giant deadly predators like the famous saber-toothed cats, woolly mammoths, giant ground sloths, dolphins and whales, primates including human beings. None of these niches None of these niches would likely have been filled with mammals had the dinosaurs and other reptiles such as pterosaurs, plesiosaurs and mosasaurs occupying them gone extinct at the end of the Cretaceous period. Or at least, it would have been an extremely uphill battle to challenge those already occupying it, and the chance of that challenge ending in failure would have been much higher than how mammals found it after the devastation of the KPG extinction event, as paleontologists call the mass extinction that followed the impact. And just as when Tyrannosaurus died, large predators rose in its place, after Rage Comics stopped being funny en masse, Wojak Comics began to take their place. Original Wojak stayed, of course, but joining him were new variations. Duma Wojak, Duma Girl, Soyjack, Dick Flattener Wojak, <laughs> Dick Flattened Wojak, Brainlet, NPC Wojak, Pink Wojak, Trap Girl, Withered Wojak, Too Smart Wojak, Shroomjack, Grug, and the list goes on and on into eternity. For as many faces and concepts as you need, there is a Wojak for it. 
The funny thing is, though, a lot of these memes bear a funny resemblance to the rage faces of old. And just as in the case of real-life extinctions and the niche occupations that rise in their wake, these memes aren't necessarily better at telling the joke than the rage faces were. But they work just well enough that they persist and live to be memed again. Their memes spread into the next generation. These memes spread into the next generation and the next and the next until they too face extinction. And a new meme fills the space left behind by the prior prevalence. Maybe the Chad meme takes off in its own Maybe the Chad meme takes off on its own outside of Wojak comics, much like Wojak did before. Maybe something new we haven't seen takes its place. Or maybe Elon Musk buys all the internet and ruins all comedy forever with the sheer weight of his unfunniness. Only time will tell. For now, in the same way memes spread like genes, persisting from one mind to the next if they are funny enough, Wojak is the current and next version of Lystrosaurus, survivor of a mass extinction, creature out of time, stumbling across the boundary of a cataclysm to find itself the only familiar face. Time will only tell if Wojak, like the Lystrosaurus, will die out, or act like the mammals after sunset on the edge of the dinosaurs and continue to adapt and evolve into as many niches as possible so that when the next extinction happens, some of them may survive to the next stage of the stupidest corners of the internet. Or perhaps, maybe we can learn a similar lesson here that we should be learning, should that is, because woo boy does a lot of shit need to be done about the environment. Instead of letting things die or letting them pass by our memory, maybe we should be working harder to archive our knowledge even knowledge of our stupidest and most unfunny memes for future generations. Maybe we shouldn't be accepting extinction as inevitable for ideas, or especially for living beings, when we have the self-awareness to know when it's happening and the power to do something about it. When we see animals going extinct because of human actions, most of us know that to be a tragedy. But many of us feel like we can do nothing about it. We're not in positions of power after all. But some of us, if enough of us try, we'll be able to break through that barrier of uncertainty. If there are enough of us fighting, we might just be able to avert the worst from being done. And yes, I'm using this topic to do a ham-fisted metaphor for the urgency of environmentalism, but this applies to information too. So many of our video games, for example, are built to run on systems that no longer exist. And as long as major video game companies try to suppress the proliferation of ROMs and the copying of their data, we may lose some true classics of an amazing and immersive art form to basically just corporate greed. The desire to squeeze every last drop of money from a piece of media, rather than creating stable and accessible archives of this precious art, to be used and reused over future generations. By using ecology as a model, we can reframe how we think about so much of our life and rethink the parts of our life that are viewed as commodities and disposable experiences, when much of what we consider consumables, whether tangible products or digital media, is precious and ought to be preserved whether in active use or in archives like libraries or museums. We should not allow the things that give our life meaning to go completely extinct. Hashtag save the Wojaks. And thanks for watching. Thank you to my patrons. Um, if you want to join them, you can pay one pound or above. And that's a good deal right now because a pound is worth fucking nothing. Uh, thank them, please. <laughs> <laughs> Those people are, and I owe them everything. Uh, Scarjan, Neronia, Joey Cobalt, Naomi Wayne, and Charles TSMTMS. You guys have made my life. And if you want to join them, get your name shout out at the end, uh, get videos early, you could. Why not? Think about it. Peace.